Hello and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 465 at scavengerlife.com. So Ryan, this is our podcast, right? Yes, it's no other podcast. And we can do anything we want on this podcast. Generally, right? yes. Okay. So this is a podcast about being a scavenger. Yes. Often very specifically about eBay. But we <laughs> talk about other things. I'm going to take an opportunity to talk about other things to try and lock Uh-oh. into the hive mind. Uh-oh. Okay? So yeah, we've talked about we are uh, we are partnering with a, another couple to uh, to start a coffee business, or they already have one, and we're going to help them make expand. It yeah, and we've been telling people, hey, buy buy their coffee, you know, uh, and people have been buying it. We've been getting a lot of questions about shipping, and it's so interesting. I never thought that that would happen, but we get a lot of emails about, "Hey, I'm you know I bought this coffee. I'm you know I have this sh- a shipping question. I mean, we're not the ones shipping. Yeah, it's Phil and Jill who are right shipping. But one of the questions is is about people not basically. It's kind of like people not wanting to pay shipping for things, and and and, 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 and I get it. As a buyer, I want free shipping. Yeah. So I wanted to kind of talk about it out loud. Yeah. To get your opinion since you're the shipper of our yeah. business, but also other people out there. Yeah. So I have opinions. Okay. Coffee. Yes. It comes in very defined weights. Yep. 12 ounces. So if you go to broadporch.coffee, you can get 12 ounces or two pounds. Right. You know, we always like the two pounds because we drink, we a, drink lot a lot of coffee. coffee. Uh, we probably drink about a pound a week. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <Can't> so tell. <laughs> okay, so twelve ounces is generally about twelve dollars. Yes, plus six dollars flat rate. This is how much. So we don't set these rates. That this is what right now Phil and Jill do. Yeah. So they've chosen to do six rate six dollars flat, flat rate. rate. Now for two pounds. It's also six dollars. If you buy a hundred dollars of coffee, it's six dollars flat rate. Right. So that's the way they've done it. So if I do twelve ounces, it's twelve dollars plus six dollars flat rate. So it'd be eighteen dollars. Yeah. So some people are like, well, I want free shipping. Right. Well, I mean, we all know shipping isn't free. Right? Yeah, you got to pay for shipping. So I don't know. Is it better Someone's to do pay. like eighteen dollars for twelve ounces? Free, free shipping. shipping. I mean, I don't know. It's like, isn't that what Amazon people do? Where it's like, I'll go and buy an iPhone case, and it's ten dollars plus five dollars to ship, or it's fifteen dollars of free, free shipping. shipping. I mean, it's like, which one do I want? I don't know. So, yeah. So, I've laid it out. In front okay. Of so, how much does it cost to ship six twelve ounces? 12 ounces. Anyway. Well, so first class mail mm-hmm. is cheaper than right. $6. They're not shipping first class. They're shipping priority. Because Phil's very like a perfectionist and he wants the freshest coffee he to get to He wants that stuff to everyone right. all over the country fast, which I understand. However, first class is cheaper. Mm-hmm. It dip- So first class used to be in quotes flat rate. Right. Sort of, depending on the weight. But it would be the same price from here to the next town over and here to California if it's 12 ounces. Right. That's not the case anymore. It's calculated based on zone. Um, it's still cheaper. So we, we're not shipping that way. Um, and then two pounds. I, I have a two pound bag, obviously, of broad porch. And I put it in a f- flat rate padded envelope and it fit. Hmm. Just barely? Or did it no, it was like... Okay. It was like perfect size not too snug and how much is that um so on on ebay god they change the prices all the time i want to say it's like 7.99 or something but you know two pounds depending on where you are can also be cheaper than a flat rate envelope so calculate to me okay it's about calculated shipping so i'm super confused because you're talking about different things so 12 ounces yeah what would the best way to ship first class. Be first class. My opinion. And is that calculated first class? Yeah. Or is there a it's flat calculated. rate? Okay. It's calculated. How much would it cost to go from 12 ounces? So it would basically be a pound because of the uh, shipping package and stuff, nah, right? I don't think no? it would be a pound. I think it would okay. be pretty close to 12 ounces. Okay. So 12 ounces. ounces to California. 
How much first class? Um, Ballpark. I think it's like five dollars. Five dollars okay. for for something. Okay. Well, okay. So so here's the thing. It depends on who you use for your labels because eBay is going to be different than Pirate Ship. Sure. Is going to be different than USPS Cook and Ship. I think he does. Like, It'll be close. Shippo. Go Shippo, which is goes, like Pirate Ship. Right. And then two pounds. It's you're saying that it's better to do it flat, flat rate, rate on and that's seven dollars. Like seven ish. Okay, gotcha. My opinion on free shipping for a very, very, very small business like this, it's not sustainable. Right. If you buy a hundred pounds, well, first of all, a hundred pounds, who's that's it would be not, like a cafe. That or would something. be a cafe yeah. and also you'd be working with yeah, right. you'd be like FedEx ground and you'd have to figure that out. Right. Um but so when you're asking for free shipping on a company that's like literally right now two people, um, you know, there you lose money. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. It's not like Amazon. It's not like Walmart. It's right. not like... Where were you selling... Target.com. Yeah, 500 things a day or something. Yeah, I mean, like, the competition is, is you know, if you're competing with Starbucks, yeah. it's a different... I mean, look, I hear you, because, but, you know, like, the I guess the argument is, well, but if you do free shipping, then maybe you'll get more... Because the, the whole thing I was talking to Phil about this is, like, subscription, you know? Right. Like... That that's like the holy grail if you can get people who love to drink coffee just t- t- to be like plug in send me twelve ounces every two weeks or send me a pound every month but give me free shipping on that but then again I guess I'm just like well then is it just like a price game where it's like yeah thirty dollars plus six dollars flat rate for a pound or just give us thirty six dollars and I'll ship for free. I mean, I don't know. Is it, it's like a psychological, psychological, but is that psychological boundary important to break? I guess that's my question. And yeah, it's a good question. And and I'm just throwing it out there. Well, for look, it, it reminds me of eBay. Right. Um, you know, it's a similar comparison between us and Broad Porch because we are a very, very, very small business that that sells really weird, varied things, and it's. It doesn't make sense for us to have free shipping. Like right. it, it just never has. The, and, and I hope the people who normally hear this podcast are keeping up with this just because I know this is not really eBay, but it is about selling things. So I, yeah. I, so, so I hope they get it. And it's, it's, it's like when you sell things like we all do, you do have to think about what you sell. Because I'm going to question you on what you just said there. So on, on our eBay business, we sell all these weird Delicate. Vintage yeah. stuff. They aren't one of a kind, but they're more rare. Yeah. I think it works for us to do calculated shipping because yeah. people don't have a whole lot of competition. You know, like they, they, they can't buy That's this weird point. item from us and then buy it someplace else that has free yeah. shipping. I think that is not as likely. Right. If we were to sell something really popular... Where there's a lot of other things out there. Like coffee. Yeah, like coffee. <laughs> yeah, it's a competition. That's why I'm bringing it up. I yeah. mean, because there's a lot of people that Online. roast coffee now where you can buy yeah. really good coffee almost anywhere. You yeah. Know? Um, so that's why I'm thinking maybe we do need to consider the free shipping. Yeah, it also... But I do understand because Phil broke it down. I mean, there's a lot of costs. You know, yeah. you had to buy the... The green beans, you yep. got to buy the the propane to yep. you know heat the roaster. Then there's the packaging. I mean, yep. those like sealed yep. airtight it's, bags are yep. not cheap. And then the packaging to ship. I mean, it. there's I mean, all overhead. And, there's labor. And there's then people's time. Rent. Right? Yeah. There's right. utility. It's all those things. Um, now the possibility of doing free shipping increases when volume increases right. as well. If you're like just just getting orders out the door all the time and you're like the volume is making up for the difference right. then sure sure that that can be a consideration right. yeah for sure it, it what do you think a lot of coffee would be i don't I mean, okay. look like it's really hard to have this conversation right. because we are not actually a part of the business right now right. It, officially like you know whatever sure. so it's hard for me to be like let me look at this spreadsheet and right. like extrapolate what's going to happen yeah. in the next six months when we have a roaster that does like five times as much right. like so yeah. you know uh right that, that yeah 
a we bought a roaster that that can roast five times as much as he can roast right, right now. now. So yeah. So cool. therefore, our labor yeah. and our time goes down, and yeah. we do a whole batch in the same amount of time. Right. That's way more. You know. So I think it is interesting yeah. is that this is kind of our first foray into yes. if that's the right word foray foray yes. foray that is the right word foray you're just uh, saying it weird <laughs> into pillow pillow uh this is our first you know time into more traditional like retail retail like this is like this world we're in where we you know find things <laughs> that is boxes. retail though that is retail Real quick. Follow my thinking. Yeah. You know, we've been spoiled by this idea. We go to an auction. We buy like a box of stuff for $20. Yeah. There's like, you know, a hundred things in it or something. We're selling each thing for, you know, 10 to $30. It's just the profit on it, yeah. if we're patient, is right. incredible. It's so much different in this yeah. traditional retail where, um, you know, when you sell a $12 bag of coffee... There's so many costs yeah. with that that the profit's pretty slim, right. you know, which is why we need to be careful about how right. we ship things and right. stuff. Uh, it's just and that you really do have to depend on volume. And, yeah, uh, you know, it's just such a different. Well, the way eBay of the eBay model that we have, like you said, it's a box of bizarre stuff. We don't even right. know what's in the box right. sometimes. Um, bizarre. It is, and. Uh, you know, the overhead is so low. Right. So that's part of it is like, yeah. you know, there is overhead. I mean, there are costs, cost of goods for sure. But um, a lot of times too, they're not fixed. Mm. Like with with the coffee, you're, I mean, you can put a spreadsheet together and you're like, right. this is how much it costs. For us, I'm like, <clears throat> this box of 100 things costs $5. Right. Uh, and then the gas to the... So, okay, those are kind of fixed costs. But... They vary so wildly with each box and each item, you know. So it's it's a different calculation um, that I generally don't do. Right. I'm just like the profit's worth it. That's yeah. all I need to right. know. <laughs> like it, it, we're gonna make at least twenty dollars on this. Item. Yeah, like it's or, not. Whereas on a bag of coffee, you know, it might be four dollars. Yeah, or I mean, like yeah, you like, can cal- you yeah. can calculate it right. for every single yeah um, you know bag. Yeah. But there's love involved. Well, yeah. I mean, of yeah. course, there there will be. Yeah. It's just, and it, it, I mean, and plus, this is attached to the idea of having a, a public coffee right. shop space, where actually the cup of coffee is more like eBay profits because yeah, you make a lot of profit on a cup of coffee uh, itself. Um, you can, you can, if you do it right. right. Um, but you know, it's also volume, right? But plus, it's you know, feed it into just our desire to do something else and to try yeah. something. And so, anyway, uh, I just thought that might be interesting for people. I would love to hear what they think about shipping. If anyone does ship more commodity items, because basically, coffee is a commodity item. Yeah, you know? it is. And you're competing with massive, massive corporations like Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, and it's just, just and insane. just the hundreds. Thousands, I don't know, the thousands, hundreds of other little independent uh, of roasters. There's an independent roaster that's on YouTube, and so like you watch their videos all the time, and they're super hip and cool and like whatever. And they, <laughs> and they, you know, whatever. They're yeah. they're inspiring to right. us. I'm like, wow, they're amazing. Um, and they do calculated shipping, and they yep. do first class on their 12 ounce bags. I'm glad. I- I'm glad you brought that up because I had been going to other people that sell coffee online just to see how they do it. And there are some people that do free. They're right. like, we ship for, for free. Amazing. I got to see their prices. But but what that company does is, yeah, they actually just give you a choice. Yeah, so first class. If you want this pound of coffee, here's calculated. Yep. But they let you choose what, you know, if you want first class, yep. if you want flat rate. That's like Amazon. Priority. So that way you're paying for it. But you have a little bit of control yeah. if you want to want to ship slower or faster, yeah. and, and you can choose. I don't think that's a bad thing. I, I think that's yeah. that's like eBay. I mean, look, but I think what Phil did was interesting, where he just did a six rate flat, six dollar flat shipping cost. So some bags he'll lose some money, some bags maybe he'll make a little, but ultimately, mm. you know, he's trying to do a deal, and the more coffee yeah. you buy the better shipping right. deal you're going to get. Sure. So I don't know. But again, 
the fairness in me is like you, just calculate it. Like, it's not free to us, so it's not free to you. So just uh, this is the cost that it is for the... Yeah, I mean, we'll figure out what makes sense in in time, but it is a good discussion. It's a good discussion for any business selling anything. Um, And if people want to hear, like, this is exactly as we're venturing into this new business, this is what we talk about. I mean, there's no magic to this. There's no... uh, uh, a mystery to starting a business. It's like numbers. It's yeah, doing the calculation. And it you know? also is. Um, and this is what's cool about a small business too is you can try something, and you can change it, and you can like you have the ability to change something like this. Right. You don't work for an organization where it takes six months to decide what kind of shipping you're doing. Right. You can just like change it on the website right. and try it for a week right. or two weeks or a month right. and be like, yeah, nobody liked that. Yeah. Right. Okay, change it. Yeah. You know, so to me, that's exciting because um, I've worked in places where, you know, like, (laughs) it's just bureaucracy and you're waiting and like nothing ever changes. But with a small business, you have the power, just like with eBay. Someone on the forum, Maylee Bills is her name. Yeah. She uh, posted, we had talked about it, that new local pickup QR code. From eBay. Is yeah. supposedly live. We we haven't tried it. We haven't sold anything. Local pickup yet. But, but the cool thing is, it finally seemed to have solved that problem. <laughs> That's so where funny. if you sell something local pickup, there was never really a like way. Proof. There's no proof to guarantee they picked it up or that the person got it. So or that the person said, you know, I guess the fear was always someone's gonna pick something up. And then open an item not received case. And there's no proof except you taking a picture of them with the thing and <laughs> right. whatever. So I guess now you can print out a thing that has a QR code and I guess they scan it. Or if they don't have that, there's like a code. There's a number code you can type in. Right. So that's cool. Uh, yeah, it's really cool. I mean, I think eBay just finally had to realize like there were a lot of people selling now on Facebook. Yeah, for Marketplace. marketplace. And not doing eBay local pickups, so they had to. They're compete. Yeah. They're trying to compete yeah. and and have a little more. Well, they want people to feel confident in selling something local pickup. Yeah, so, so that's smart. I think yeah. it's it's an easy solution. Competition is good. I mean, you know, the eBay can either crash and burn because all these you know other places start eating at its market share or ebay can step up and get better so we'll see i mean yeah it's a good thing i think it's cool i think the other thing is we were talking about uh thread up t-h-r-e-d up yeah it's like are they a website yeah so it's so this is interesting i think i've heard of them before but for some reason it came up oh because Someone says that they now sell on Walmart. Walmart. dot com, and I guess the person that posted it was like, "Oh, Walmart! You can now buy old clothes on Walmart. dot com through this startup." And the and the idea was maybe we'll be able to sell on Walmart. dot com. I don't think that's true. Yeah, but I don't know. Uh, but it's interesting. This company. They've been around for about a decade now, but they're like one of these venture funded businesses. Yeah, and we were all kind of talking about it. So they've been they've they've been funded three hundred million dollars in the past ten years. Oh my which is, god! You know, it's they're like the Uber of vintage clothes. I didn't. I'd heard of them, but I didn't really know. They about sell them. on eBay, supposedly. Yeah, That's yeah. What no, someone was saying they sell on eBay, eBay. They sell on their own website. They sell like through J.C. Penney's and Macy's, what? and they. I think someone even said they were starting to have like actual storefronts. They're like the uh, real, real. You know, you've heard of them, the real, real. Yeah, we, but we went to that store. I thought they. I thought real, real was like used like high end right they're like them in the sense of they're a venture backed okay gotcha. company right. that's selling pre-owned pre-owned items. stuff the uh, a real real focuses on like high end shoes and high-end. purses they're the thread up is just selling like a lot of clothes that we would sell like banana republic and yeah. you like and the way it works is it you send in a box 
to them of clothes. Oh, and they pay you for it? And then they supposedly pay you for it, although they're they very upfront. They're oh, like, I bet they pay you nothing for They're it. like, we actually only probably accept 40% of yeah. more people's boxes because the And then we keep the rest. We're not going to send them back. I don't know exactly how that works. <laughs> but, you know, the photos on their a website is amazing. I mean, they have these, like... These warehouses the that we would all dream of where it's just like oh my like God. 30 foot ceilings, 40 foot ceilings with clothes on racks all the way to the ceiling, all the way back. I mean... Talk about an inventory system. Uh, seriously. Skew and, system. And if you go on their site, like they're selling things for a, a lot of times, $15. I mean, it's just... I, I don't understand... This is why we're not selling any clothes. I don't understand how a company like this wants... That funding dries up and they have to live or die right. on like their prices. daily profit. Yeah, exactly. Like they have 1,500 people, 1,500 employees. I, I, I don't even know what to right. say. Because thinking about that, someone has to touch each and every piece of clothing. Like that's the thing. Like I get what they're trying to do, that there's this market. Like yeah. they're like be like goodwill, but like the but 21st like better, century. And, yeah. You know – this I, I just don't know if you can do it, you know. I, I don't know. Well, well see. okay. When stuff is look, I mean, we talked mm-hmm. about this before. When stuff is venture capital backed, it, that's an artificial right. way of operating. Right. And I guess for that kind of business, they're not really thinking so much about we need to make a profit. It's more like can we get bought out? Right, you know, by Walmart. Or- Walmart.com comes and buys us out because they right. want to get into the market of uh, used clothes. Or we go public and then we get we, we cash out because people buy into the company and then it's a public company, and, you know, like, like just, Uber did, you know. Yeah, and you're like, what's the point? Yeah. To make the founders money. Yeah. That's it? Sure. Why not? It's just a different, it's like the Silicon Valley way of thinking about business. Yeah. It, it is just interesting. I just did not know how big they were, are because I really hadn't heard. I forgot about anything. them until someone yeah. sent that link. Thread up. Uh, okay. Our our numbers were not $300 million. <laughs> or our venture million capitalists. Or uh... Okay. Uh, we sold 59 items mm. for $1,672.34. It's not, not including... Shipping. There's a lot of low dollar items. Yeah. uh, But I don't care. I'll sell those. Yeah, it was still, I mean, I'll sell a $10. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Right. I will. And I have. We have no shame. Yeah, like our average selling price was about $28 or so. Oh, that's not bad. That's all. Hey, that's almost $30. Yeah. (laughs) And I like $30. But yeah, we were getting a lot of low dollar sales this week. Um, Stuff I was fine selling. And we were just selling, yeah, we sold clothes. Hats, ashtrays, lamps, remote control, doodads. I mean, it was, just, it was goo gauze. It was really, it was cool. I'm like, wow, I forgot we even had that. Like, yeah, it's right. amazing. It's what sold. is that thing? Yeah, it was, it was cool. Yeah. Um, you know, scavenge of the week. We have still been going through that stuff we bought at that other auction. Yes. Three weeks ago, we just now started three cracking weeks those. Ago? Two weeks ago. Three weeks ago, we just now oh started God. cracking those boxes open of pulling stuff out yep. of it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I started. There were some big old crazy <laughs> delicate things. Like what? Like a vase, vase yeah. is like three feet tall. Right. And like I'm like, how am I going to ship this? This yeah. thing is made of ceramic. Right. Like, talk about oh uh, calculate shipping on that one. Oh my you know? God! But you know what? It was cool. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, you know, our customer issues this week was we had talked about it. We sold a sewing mm. machine to this guy a month ago and you know it was when everyone was starting to make masks i'm sure that's why yeah of course he bought it he gets it and he says you know whatever it's It's not not working super working well but we had we had bought it and it was a working item so it's one of those things where like you know it's like it's when you sell a piece of electronics where someone doesn't know how to operate it the thing is though he waited and i don't know if he did this on purpose he waited till the last minute to ship it. And of course, you know, the uh, conspiracy theorists and all of us is like, did he buy it and use it for that month? Oh, 
Oh, and then return it. Oh, you're not thinking like it. I didn't even think like that. I, think I was he, like, why would he wait so long? I think he more just probably... I think he just... Realized he had to ship it, so... The thing we so, however many... So I guess we're, we're not going to to resell that thing on eBay. We'll just... Because, yeah, it kills us on having to pay to sh- ship it. We probably lost $20 on that thing. We'll just sell it on Facebook Marketplace. I've tried to sell it on Facebook. And you know what? If I can't sell it on Facebook, I'm just giving it to my local thrift store. Yeah. The Why end. Not? Why not? Someone will know how to use it and whatever. Yeah. And then they can make some money off of it. And yeah. That makes me happy. That's right. Either put it online or donate it. Just get it out of my house. Yep. Um, so we got an interesting comment on a YouTube I uh, normally comments on a YouTube mark, right? I'll say that, but uh, it's Sorry, fine. YouTubers. They're fine. Uh, someone, but this, this guy or this person made a really good comment where he was like, because I think we're talking about feedback or something. Yeah. And he said that feedback is outdated and obsolete. It's a relic of the Wild West of the 90s or early 2000s on eBay, you know. Interesting. When, when you know, yeah. cus- but now... Customers overwhelmingly don't even check feedback out because they know they're covered when, whenever they shop online, you know? Yeah. Feedback was when there was no buyer protection. Right. Uh, and that's so true. I don't even know why eBay does feedback anymore because yeah, sellers can't put feedback. I mean, You can't put negative anything but positive. Yeah. So, like, why even have it for right. a seller? And for a buyer, it's like, why let the buyer say anything? Either return it right. and get all your money back because there's built-in buyer protection. Even if I have no returns on it, a buyer can still return yep. something if, if it's unhappy. effective. Yeah. But why let someone just put some dumb comment because they're dumb? You know. Well, the other thing too is if your feedback score and like ratio gets too low. You get suspended anyway. Right. So any kind of like scammer or someone who's not actually shipping their stuff, I mean, they're going to get taken off the site. Yeah. You know, it's it's not like you can get 50% feedback. But I think that this, I think this guy did the comment because of what we were talking about. We're like, we have this thing, like any negative feedback we have, we always have a couple. It yeah. Just, it's just it's, inevitable. It just, it can't, yeah. It's just inevitable. Where someone buys an item. <laughs> They don't want their money back. They don't want to return it. They don't want to return it. They just want to complain. They just want to complain about something. And it's just that that seems unproductive. Right. Especially when, look, like you said, there are like such great buyer protections. I have 30-day free returns open. So if you choose not to use that, I'm paying to ship it back to me. You're like, uh, come on. and it's true for me as well. When I buy online, I do not ever check out feedback, feedback. or or on Amazon. I never look at oh my god Amazon of the seller. I'll, yeah, I'll check out the feedback on the item. Right, sure, and the see item and quality. see what people write about right. the item. Like, is this going to work for me? But I don't check out if the buyer is a nice person, if he's mean or whatever. You know. Like because I because I know that if I buy something from someone from Amazon or eBay, I'll just return it. Right. I'll force a return yeah. if there's something wrong with it. You know, it's a good point. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it is. It's that whole like, do you have a purple star or a blue star? Yeah, right? Right. you're just like are there eBay? like uh, sparks coming out I of mean, your star? It just you're like okay, that's <laughs> like very 1997, right. like. It, I think it's the same graphic. Yeah. That's the, the oh my god. It, it's I'm almost like right you've gotten to the point where those like, it's like stars a, it's like a joke. are almost like kind of like a kitschy, like you know, n- like a, nostalgic joke. And like I mean, if you took it, it away, is. people would be so mad because I like, just I love my purple star. I worked so hard for the turquoise star. <laughs> <Yeah>. Um <laughs> What kind of star do we have? I forget. It's the one where you're it's over like, ten thousand. It's like a gold star with like sparks coming off of it. Yeah. It's a oh my god. <laughs> I think um, the its next one is like twenty thousand. You like, know what I would rather have than a an icon from 1997 next right. to my name, right. like uh, a discount on my fees. <laughs> okay, I'd much rather have that Ouch. eBay. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you know? uh, yeah. So I don't know if I, we we never know if anyone from eBay uses, but that I thought. Are was you very, listening? 
that that was a very good comment, and I feel like uh, I think I feel correct. like people should take that to heart. Yep. Okay, let's get to the comments or questions that people sent in today. You can call our voicemail line. The phone phone number is five four zero four zero seven eight four eight six, or you can email us an audio file. Our email is the scavenger life at gmail dot com. Hi, it's uh, Keith from Vintage Classics. I've called in every so often. Hey, I wanted to give you guys a heads up on the um, the manage payments. I just was listening to the podcast and I heard that you guys recently signed up for it. Um, I've been in managed payments for a while since it pretty much first started. I kind of signed up by accident. Um, there was a few bumps when I first started, but it's been pretty good ever since. Um, something I ran into, though, and this will be for you and for uh, some of the listeners that signed up for it. When you sign up for managed payments, make sure that your your business information and business info in the account settings is exactly the same as it says on your uh, tax ID form for the federal government. If it says road, R-O-A-D, in your tax form, make sure that you write road in your business info on eBay. Um, I had an abbreviation I in, on eBay. I wrote R-D and put it spelled out road. It triggered this ridiculous al- algorithm in eBay, and I had to go back and forth with the managed payments rep, and I it took me two weeks of um, of not getting any money back until they fixed it on their end, on eBay's end. So you need to make sure that all your info and business info is the exact same as your info that you have registered with the federal government for your ta- your business tax ID. Um, same abbreviations, same capitalization. If your middle name is on the form, make sure your middle name is on the business info because eventually it will catch up with you. And like I said, I had... Uh, it was like two, two and a half weeks, not getting any payouts because it triggered something, and they're checking every so often. I think the uh, the reps said they check once a quarter um, for all that. So just make sure that all your info is exactly the same as your federal tax ID. All right? Thanks, guys. Have a great one. Bye. That is very good information. Thank you for sharing it. Now I need to go back and make – I mean, I'm pretty sure it's all the same. Yeah. I never spell out road. Road, yeah. Also, where would I find that? (laughs) Like, I don't know. Yeah, I guess I would look at my taxes. Maybe, yeah. Like, how do I know what the official government has information? I guess that's what I would do, look at my taxes. Okay, thanks. Hi, Dan Lyon. This is Samantha down in Florida. I want to ask questions about item descriptions. Um, I started reselling two and a half years ago, and I did go back and listen to almost every one of your podcasts. But, you know, I know things are changing, and um, eBay changes its algorithms and whatever else. You know, I had noticed at some point your item descriptions became very, very sparse, like just the absolute bare minimum of information. But when I'm searching, doing research, you know, I'll see these beautiful descriptions, you know, with all this color and you know, and I'm like, I wonder how much that influences the sale of an item. I mean, I could imagine a collector of pottery or dishes looking for something specific, something undamaged would need that description. But, you know, the descriptions take time and the research takes time and it all slows you down. And I'm having trouble, you know, I'm having problems getting my eBay store, the um, getting everything listed and getting my total number of listings up. I'm at 428 now, but I have like 200 more things to list. But the descriptions and the research just really slow you down, even using templates, um, trying not to put too much in. Like right now I'm kind of revamping a lot of the older listings that haven't sold just a little by little. Um, but I'm just really wondering what I should be spending my time on here in order to sell the most. How much does that item description really motivate someone? Because they have to actually go look at it. And I notice on the mobile app, it's, you know, it's, you have to do extra clicks to get to it. They don't show you that much just scrolling through. And even I myself skip it a lot of times when I'm looking at the mobile app. So give me your opinion and have a good day. So, yeah, this, I mean, we don't have the definitive answer. We can tell you what we've done from our experience. So we started on eBay and we would write long descriptions. Long-ish. Long-ish. They weren't too long. But they were on a template. It was HTML. Yeah, we had a, we had a template yeah. with like information and links and all that stuff. And then I don't know when it was, five years ago or something? Like when eBay started to really get into the mobile world. Yeah. 
descriptions they, were hidden. They yeah. actually would hide the description where if you're shopping on the mobile phone, you'd have to tap like twice to get to the still description. Do, so, yeah. And we were putting in like sizes and colors and stuff. And then eBay moved to item description Item specifics. For so long, eBay right. did not have item specifics for right. color, for size, for... Right. Uh, there's a million item right. specifics now. And the reason they're doing that is for search, number one. For, so it's called structured data. So, yeah. So, so now when I search for like a, a t-shirt... On the sidebar, I can put my size in, right. and eBay is filtering or the color or whatever. And eBay is filtering based on the item specifics that each person has put in. Instead right. of in the old days, it was just like a jumble of text. Here's a bunch of T-shirts, and good luck finding yeah, something. You have to like search for the information you want. So when that started happening, we just realized, and it was actually some people who called in, yeah. just like you, that, that said, I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah, no. And we were like, you're right. Let's just not do it. And so- Yeah, we, it's so time consuming. So I think we just basically like copy and paste a title to have something. I don't even right? put that. No, I yeah. don't even, because they, they like strip that out because they're mm. like, you already have the, like, you don't right. need the title. So there's no title. I will have measurements, but I also put measurements in the item specifics if it's applicable. Right. And-, and this is true not just for clothes, but for any item. Yeah. Like, we just cram all the information about the item in the title and as then much the as item possible. specifics. Now, there are some people here in us who are more old school and are more into, like, the collector world who would probably argue that if you have some really cool vintage antique item, right. it helps to put a long description of, like, the history... You could do that. Where it came from. If it's very special. Yeah. Most of the stuff we're selling, it's not It's yeah. not at that level. Right. I mean. Some of it might be. And we just don't see any problem. We don't yeah, have. Yeah, I don't. We, I can't remember the last time someone said, I would buy this, but you're not giving me enough info. I mean, we take a lot of photos. Yeah. Like from, like we act as if we're holding it in our hand and you're turning it. Around so you can see an item from every detail. I mean, right. Um, and then as far as like if something's wrong with the item, that goes in the description. Like yeah, if, a whole. So there's a there's item specific condition description. What the hell, oh God? What's it called? It's it's like the condition specific. Right. So you're like there's a scratch on this part, but I also put that in the description right. too. Um, so that's worked for us, and it saved us a lot of time. I just my hat goes off to the people that are still willing to uh, sit down and spend you know a half hour writing up a whole story about an item. But you know, look, we don't do that. My my advice is also like if that is keeping you from listing, just don't do it. I mean, yeah. we say that about research too. It's good to research things, but there are some things that you're like, it is not worth the time. Throw a price on it. Uh, and go keep going, (laughs) you know, do research for a price. Like don't, don't undersell things, but you got to just make it so you're not sitting there for an hour on one item. So just to summarize, I think the big thing is to put more time into photos. So I use all 12 photos because we remember too, the old days of like long descriptions was when eBay would let you put one photo up. Right. And then you had to host photos yourself. If and- you chose to. And then that's why we would put photos in the description in an HTML. Now that you can do 12 photos, take advantage yeah. of that. Because that's all I am looking for. If I'm trying yeah. to find like a cool doorknob for right. like a vintage door. Show good photos. I don't need you to tell me the history, but I just need like a bunch of photos so I can see if it looks cool. Right. Know? I mean, Look, I shop on eBay all the time for many, many reasons, and I can't tell you how many people have horrible photos that they took in the dark on top of their washing machine. And you're just like, just be the person who does it better and someone will buy that item from you because they trust you. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for the question. Okay. That's it for this week. Thanks for joining us. And if you have any comments on... uh, the best way to ship commodity items. We <laughs> love products. to know. Yeah, food products. Um, okay, we do this podcast. We publish every Monday. You can find us at scavengerlife.com. That's where we all kind of hang out and talk. 
Uh, you can leave a question or comment on our voicemail line. That phone number, again, is 540-407-8486. Or you can email us an audio file. Our email is thescavengerlife at gmail.com. And on Wednesdays, we post our friend's video, Steve. Uh, he what soul? Shows the stuff that he sold. He's still selling away, just yeah, like all of us. Yeah, selling some cool vintage stuff. He's keeping at it. Um, and you can subscribe to us through a YouTube or iTunes. Or wherever you get your... Or Google or where yeah. like all these Googie, other places. Spotify, yep. I think. I Maybe. Maybe. I tried. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think it. we're there. Uh, okay. We're ending this podcast in three, two, one.